Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Yarnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. And yes, we're finally doing it. We are painting with watercolor. This is a request we've had for many years from all around the world. We've done a little over the years, probably the last 25, 30 years that we've been doing these things. But now I'm going to take this to a much more comprehensive, you might say professional level in the sense of all a little bit more advanced techniques and how to make it work. But we're going to start from scratch because there are many of you that are new to the show uh, that have been watching for a long time and you're, you know, you really like watercolor. Yes, I still love acrylic and I still love the oils and I still love pastel. We're going to do some of that sometime. But now we're going to conquer for the next few sessions some wonderful watercolor techniques. And yes, we are going to do some paintings. But remember, watercolor is a different animal. So in our first session today, even though we're going to get to splash a little color on it and do some fun things, it's more about introducing you to the concepts, the techniques, the ideas behind it, what makes it work, what makes it not work, some of the, uh, you might say, uh, how to troubleshoot when you're having problems, why things don't work quite right, what kinds of papers to use. There's multiple things that can go wrong in watercolor, unlike the opaque mediums like oil and acrylic. Because once you've set a watercolor in place and you put it on the, as a wash, you can sometimes put multiple washes on to correct, but usually you can't fix something as easily. There are some fixing techniques I'm going to show you. Like with oil and acrylic, you just paint right over and start over. In uh, watercolor, you can't do that. In fact, I heard a national average some time ago that in the oil or the opaque mediums, to get one good painting out of every seven is pretty much a national average. In watercolor, it's one out of every ten. Watercolor is unpredictable. That's what makes it fun. Uh, a lot of people that like, uh, you know, that, that kind of your personality is like that. Maybe watercolor suits you better than, than the other medium. So let's get started. I know you're kind of tired of me yakking here. But the first thing I want to do is give you the setup. Now, most of us like to work on a flat surface when we're painting with watercolor. I'm one of those. I like to stand when I do it. Yes, if you prefer to sit, a nice little slight angle might be good for you so you can kind of get over it. It's good to sit down. And the reason why is because water, of course, runs. And it's going to, you have to control it. You have to do a lot of movement in watercolor. So I think that's what you're going to like about this. It's certainly what I like about it is all the action that's involved. So let's go down here to my layout table. Let's see if I can point out a few things. Now, first of all, let's, I'm going to see if I can get them to go over here to my palette. Yeah, here we go. Now see, this is my palette layout. Now I'm going to say something, folks. This palette is mine that I choose for me. There are multiple types of watercolor palettes out there on the market. You can buy all kinds. You just need to have something with plenty of wells. These are called wells. These are your mixing wells. These are your paint wells. And some watercolor artists prefer dozens and lots of colors. You can get one with 30 or 40 different wells. This one, I'm just keeping it simple for the TV, but I do have one that's got 36 wells in it that's in a big circle. I've got some other ones, but these are made out of some type of plastic. They're easy to wash and take care of. So what you'll do is once you set up your color scheme, mine's pretty basic, the typical greens, typical blues, reds, and so forth, then it's very important. I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning.